today's video, we're looking at a brand new power station from Anchor called the 521. Now the good news about this one is it sells for just $259. Now there are many other stations on the market that sell for about the same amount, but they're not using lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's a more advanced type of battery that's gonna last a lot longer and still maintain up to 100% capacity. But that's not the only reason you'd wanna consider this one. So let's look at some of the features to see what this thing can do. One feature so many companies cheap out on is the display. Now, if you can't read the thing in bright sunlight or maybe even get any good information from it, it's not gonna be very helpful. But this one doesn't have any of those problems. You can read the battery percentage from across the room. And if you look on the bottom, it's also a smart display. Shows you the power going into it if you're charging it and how much power you're using going out. And it also gives you an estimate of time. So you know how long you can use this thing before the battery is gonna run out. On the front of the unit, you've got two AC outlets. Now you can use these with grounded plugs, regular plugs, or even AC adapters. Another feature they've included that a lot of larger units don't even have is that you can be charging the unit up and using power at the same time. And here I put that feature to the test. I plugged my Mac into the front of the anchor and then plugged the anchor's charging brick right into the wall. So now the unit can keep charged and run the computer at the same time. But if I should lose power in the house, the computer is gonna keep working until the Anka's battery is exhausted. And if I just ran on the battery, I could run this iMac for about 8.6 hours before I ran out. And this built-in light doesn't have any special features. You just push the button once to turn the light on, push it again to turn it off, and this one just gives you a good quality ambient light. This would be perfect in a dark room or maybe even in a tent. The power specs in this one can be a little bit confusing because they advertise 398 watts of total output. Now the AC outlets are capable of putting out 200 watts, but at the same time you're running something on AC, you can also be using those DC outlets. To test that feature out, I wanted to load this thing up. So I have my computer plugged in the AC outlet, but now I wanted to connect this 12 volt fan into the cigarette plug, and then I went ahead and connected two LED flashlights, a keyboard, a mouse, and it had no problems at all running all these devices. The capacity of the battery inside the unit is 298 watt hours. That means you could run 298 watts for one hour. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of power, but when you look at smaller loads like this, you can run them for a surprisingly long time. The CPAP only uses about 35 watts, and even with this battery at 84% capacity, I would still be able to run it for about five hours. On the front of the device, you'll find three USB ports, two USB-A, and one USB-C that's capable of 60 watts of output. They've also got a switch that says power saving. Now when you turn that to the on position, you're gonna see a little icon in the upper left hand corner. And when it's on, it'll automatically turn the device off as soon as your USB devices are fully charged. And when it's time to recharge the battery, this one gives you five different ways you can do it. The first is to use the included AC adapter, plugs into a regular outlet, and the other end goes into the back of the device. Now if you charge it using AC, it takes about 4.1 hours to go from zero to 100%. You can also charge it up in the car or anywhere that you've got one of these 12 volt cigarette plugs. Now if you go this route, it's also gonna take about 4.1 hours to get you from zero to 100%. And you can also charge it up with a solar panel. It can handle a maximum of 60 watts of solar input. Now this panel is 100 watts. Now this can be a dangerous game because if it hit the full 100 watts, I'd end up burning out that input port. So I don't recommend doing it this way. You wanna get a 60 watt solar panel and it should work with most of the common ones and they do give you the voltage specs right in the manual. Now I plugged it in and this thing had no problems at all handling it. And if you were getting the 60 watts of maximum solar input, you could also charge this thing up in just over four hours. And the final two ways you can charge this up is directly through the USB port. Now this is really great if you're traveling because you can get rid of the AC adapter and charge it right through that USB-C port in the front of the unit. Now that's normally capable of 60 watts of output, but now you can charge it with 60 watts of input and doing it that way, you'll be able to charge this from zero to 100% in 4.1 hours. And the final method you can charge it, which is supposed to be the fastest, is to combine that USB-C input along with the AC adapter. Now they say you can charge it up in two and a half hours and I was really excited about it, but unfortunately I could never get it to work. It would work fine with the USB-C charger alone and the AC adapter, but I couldn't get them to work together for more than about 30 seconds. And it might just be an incompatibility with the chargers I have or an issue with the prototype unit they sent me, but either way, it didn't work for me. I also wanted to test out how this thing would handle an overload. Now remember those AC outlets can put out 200 watts. The little red heater uses around 240. So when I plugged it in, the heater actually worked for about 15 seconds. That's a pretty good sign showing the quality of the inverter. And then as expected, the outlets were automatically shut off by the device. And that's exactly what it should do for safety. 
and also did my standard electrical testing to make sure the voltage and frequency were correct, but more importantly to confirm that it is putting out pure sine wave power so that you're getting clean electrical output. The main feature that sets this device apart is the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if you're gonna be charging it up all the time and you're afraid you might wear out regular lithium ion batteries, this could be a really good choice. It doesn't have as many features as some of the units I've tested, but if that's one of the most important things to you, this is definitely a good one to consider. And I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.